and welcome to Enzy Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to warn you about an all-too-easy way to damage your brain and rapidly accelerate the chances of both depression and dementia. And it's not something that's often discussed, even though it should be. In fact, this common occurrence is actually the largest avoidable risk factor for developing dementia, something that exceeds even the damaging effects of high blood pressure, smoking, sedentary lifestyles, and social isolation. This is very personal for me because it's something that I've actually done to myself over the course of many, many years. How many of you have difficulty hearing? I certainly do, and it's something that's been with me for far too long, and it's also something that's really accelerated over the past three years. I've always had a very sharp sensitivity to sound, and this is one primary reason why music has always been such a dynamic part of my life, sometimes even too dynamic. Hearing loss doesn't develop overnight. Like many things, it's the result of repeated low-level trauma. What does this mean? Just as metabolic syndrome doesn't result after one junk food meal, it actually happens after a lifetime of junk food, and just like how touching a hot stove in microsecond increments all day long will cause far more damage than laying your hand on a hot stove one time for five seconds, the damage of hearing loss is cumulative and the end result can be thought of, quite rightly, as death by a thousand cuts. My hearing loss is entirely my fault. I can point to countless incidents over the past 40 years that have incrementally contributed to what I deal with today. I always knew I'd lose my hearing, but I expected the damage to manifest sometime in my 80s or 90s. I never dreamed it would show up when I was only 37. So how does hearing loss affect the brain? When the brain doesn't receive adequate audio stimulation and actually has to work harder to decipher what it does here, this gradually erodes its ability to perform other cognitive responsibilities. This fits the classic model of dementia, as information that is consistently misheard can impair the brain's ability to remember it. When you look at hearing loss this way, it's apparent that the quality of sound is far more important than the volume of sound. The brain cannot focus on individual words if it's straining to unscramble the input. Like so many areas of the body, the prime directive of the brain is use it or lose it, meaning that consistently inadequate auditory brain stimulation can accelerate brain cell atrophy. Unfortunately, many people, me included, wait far too long to get their hearing tested and treated. I was in somewhat of a denial over my own hearing loss for more than a year, and in that time, it accelerated with frightening speed. If you listen to the subpar vocal quality in some of my much earlier episodes, you can definitely notice the effect. The painful truth I learned is that the longer you wait, the more difficult treatment becomes. One indicator to look for to know when and if you should get your hearing checked is when family and friends say that you often mishear things, don't respond at all when spoken to, and or if they tell you you're speaking in an unnaturally loud voice. I've experienced all of these things. The two greatest contributing factors to hearing loss are intensity and duration meaning the longer you are exposed to loud sound, the greater the damage. I worked in radio broadcasting for many years, and also, I'm a metalhead, so I've been to countless concerts over the years, and I didn't wear any ear protection at all for most of them. I'm paying for that every day now. If you listen to music through headphones or earbuds, look for ones that have noise-canceling technology that blocks ambient sound. This allows people to listen to music or podcasts at a much lower volume that is far less damaging to hearing. Even with hearing aids, the relief is not immediate. The brain needs time to adjust, especially if you're older. I've been working with an audiologist to properly calibrate my own hearing, and we've been at it for more than a year now. Again, the earlier the hearing loss is treated, the easier it is for the brain to adapt. Hey guys, I'm stepping away from the microphone for once because I want to show you something. You see that? These are my ears now. This is the only way I can hear, because without these, I can't hear much of anything. It's amazing how quickly the brain can degrade from just a lack of audio stimulation. So get your hearing checked. Do it now.
Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy. Thank <laughs> you.